What's up, man? It's like we're best friends already, man. Yeah. Second shoot, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Let's do this, man. Let's knock it out real quick. By the way, I did a little like pull right sentence for you. That's what we shot earlier. Oh, that's crazy. How did you do that so you quick? You keep that, man. I've worked my magic, man. I worked my magic. Too. So all the years I've been playing, it's the first time somebody did anything on like steel in his hand. You know? What's up, guys? Welcome back. And today we're going to be talking about going to school versus working with a photographer. What are the pros and cons, and what you learn from each. Alright guys, so the easiest thing I could do is starting off kind of telling you how I got into photography and how I started learning. I went formally to school and I got an education and I studied not only photography, I studied graphic design, um, art history, painting and drawing. Uh, I went to Cal State Hayward here in the Bay Area, it's now called Cal State East Bay. I went there from 2002 to 2007, I actually ended up dropping out so I didn't finish. Now um, let me elaborate on that one, I didn't finish uh, school on there because when I got to a point for my senior year, I was really into photography and already had a lot of assignments and a lot of things that I wanted to do on my own. I myself personally didn't need a teacher or an instructor telling me what to do and what to shoot. Like I know some of my classmates did and I know some of the people ahead of me when they finished school, they were like lost. They were like, oh my God, I don't know what to shoot now. I don't have a teacher telling me an assignment. And I remember thinking in my mind, like, are you seriously? Are you kidding me? Like, come on now, I don't need a, a teacher to give me assignments to tell me what to shoot. I could go find out and you know, I could go on my own, there's like 10 things I wanna shoot uh, and figure it out. I don't need a, you know, somebody to assign, give me an assignment to do stuff like that. I'm self-motivated in that way, at least, to be able to find out what to shoot. Uh, so that's why I kinda ended up dropping out because I was already, you know, uh, to learn lighting. The way I learned it, I did take a lighting course, but I, for me personally, I didn't learn it that well, at least the way the, the instructors taught, taught it in that school. Uh, and I hate it when you have a teacher or somebody setting up the lights for you. You just come in, put the pocket wizard in your camera, you shoot, and that's it. I, I don't learn like that. I have to learn from the beginning, setting up all the light stands, doing everything. And ultimately, that's how I ended up learning lighting. I just went out on my own. I bought four strobes, and I practiced self-portraits on myself with whomever I could get a, a hold of. My little brother, my little sister, thankfully. Thank you guys. I love you so much for being my first models. And I practiced with them, and they were very patient with me because I was super slow. And that's, that's how I learned lighting. And the same thing with, you know, Photoshop. I learned it because I got into photography because I studied graphic design. So I kind of, that's how I got into photography from graphic design. And that helped me out immensely with uh, post-production and retouching. And what helped me out on top of that was the way I got into graphic design was I always loved drawing since I was a little kid. And I always had somewhat of a talent drawing and then being able to replicate what I saw. And then being drawing and sketching, that helps you out a lot with retouching because that's essentially what you're doing. Uh, so all of that was just supplemented to me uh, in, in school. And then kind of once I knew what I wanted to do, I just kind of you know took off on my own and I learned and kind of you could almost say I was self-taught even though I was going to school. Uh, and so that's why for me personally, I ended up dropping out. So with all that being said, what I did learn and what school benefited me greatly was uh, studying everything formally. I was forced to study art history because uh, that's something I would have never done on my own. I hate reading, I hate studying and going to art lectures, studying about other painters, uh, about anything music, uh, my art one drawing class, uh, I learned immensely. I had a great, uh, a great professor, uh, Corbin Lapel, who was real deep, real, philosoph real philosophical uh, and I learned a lot of stuff from him that I would have otherwise never learned. Um, and also when you go to school, you're forced to study, um, you know, things for an entire quarter, an entire semester. You know, so you're reading up on art history, you're reading up on the art, uh, the history of photography for two to three months at a time, you know, however long your quarter is, your semester is, and, and you're immersed in it. And uh, if you're not going to school formally, what's considered intense is like what, a two or three day workshop or, or God forbid a five day workshop is considered intense. And five, five, days is not, five, five days is one week in school. And in school, you're there for you know studying your major for two to three years at a time. So I did study art and, and you know graphic design and art history and all that for roughly two two and a half years before I dropped out. And for me, that was important because it kind of gave me the foundations and the fundamentals of what I have for my work. So I, one of the things that I noticed with myself personally versus other photographers that are self-taught, 
when I when I talk to them, it's a lot of times they have no idea for creativity. They have no idea on you know how to light stuff. I never run out of stuff like that because again, I, I just credit that to studying you know the the greats of uh, of, of not photography but of just art in general. So for a few examples, like some of the artists that, like Jackson Pollock, you know, a lot of people don't understand art on there. They just say, oh, they got this gold paint. Like, you know, try studying him. Try starting Marcel Duchamp or uh, John Cage. Like all those guys, like I didn't really understand it when I first started, you know, uh, learning about them. But, you know, over time, you know, when, you know, when I got to understanding art more and got to understanding, you know, photography more, I'm like, dude, those guys are actually really dope. They're real deep and they really know what they're doing. Um, you know, and you're able to take away something a little bit from each of them. And I get my inspiration all the time from non-photography sources. I get it from music, I get it from art, I get it from uh, even poetry and all that stuff. And that's where I get my inspiration from and I never run out of ideas. Um, and that's like, you know, I got like a million different things that I want to do, you know, as far as lighting goes, as, uh, as far as, um, you know, photography goes. Um, so that's me, that's one huge benefit that going to school gave me that I know for a fact that people don't get when, they, when they're self-taught. And it's also one thing learning from a book and it's another thing learning from a professor who has a PhD on it and explains everything in an articulate uh, and very elegant manner that explains everything to you. It's really inspiring and eye-opening and I'm thankful for that. That's something that I got my foundation on uh, from school for creativity. What I didn't learn from school was and that I think a lot of schools lack is that they don't teach you um, the business of photography. They don't teach you how to be a working photographer at all. I know my school didn't at all. They just taught you like the art side of it and they didn't teach you any of the business sides, how to market yourself, how to promote yourself as a photographer, how to handle your business, how to handle with clients, uh, how to do personal projects and all that stuff. None of that stuff they taught in school or contracts. They didn't even bring that up at all. That's where I think a lot of schools lacking. And then another thing that I, I see personally too as well, I speak every year whenever I get the opportunity at, uh, at local schools here. I speak at back of you know, my school, uh, Cal State Hayward, um, and also speak at the Academy of Art University uh, regularly to a senior portfolio classes. Um, and one thing personally that I, that I noticed from, from seeing most, most students, um, a lot of them you know, show me their portfolio work and all my feedback. And from doing enough of these, I could already give you the feedback, give students feedback without seeing their work. And the, the feedback I have is simple, shoot a lot more. A lot of students that are going to all these schools that are really expensive, that cost 10,000, you know, 20,000 a year, and they're finishing off your senior year. Because uh, those are the classes I, I get invited to speak at, which is a senior portfolio class which is right before they graduate, which they're supposed to have a portfolio, you know, ready with their work, you know, to, to have and, and show. And that's the work that I see. And what I see that a lot of students have is number one, they don't have enough work. And number two is their work scattered all over the place. Like I'll see a senior's portfolio and they have like 10, 12, maybe 20 images and they're all over the place. One of them is an illustration, the other is like a composite, another is like a reportage image. They might have like three or four portraits, like in one style, then some natural light stuff. And it really has no vision. You can just tell they're doing the school work. And if you're a student and you're going to photography school and you want to be a working photographer, just doing the school work is not enough. So that, that would, that's a, a great analogy of how it is to be a professional uh, working photographer. Like for me, just doing the work I get paid for and hired for it is not enough. I do the jobs that I get hired for and I get paid for. In addition to that, I'm always doing personal work on the, on the other end and doing work that I love doing on my own and then that's the work that helps you get hired. If you're a student, you should be doing the same exact thing. You should be doing all the work, all the school work right here that your, your professors and your teachers give you. In addition to doing all that work, you should be here on your own. Um, I don't know what the f I'm doing on my head, but you should, be, <laughs> you should be doing on your own, your own personal work, that stuff that you love doing on top of all of your school work. If you get all A's in your school work, congratulations, like that's, that's not good enough. No one's gonna care. You have to do all your school work, finish doing all the school work, they do kill it, get an A. In addition, do the same amount of work uh, for your own personal work. And that's the, the perfect analogy of what it's like to be a working photographer. You have all your assignments here that you do that you get hired for. In addition, that's not enough. If you want to keep working and you want to keep innovating and you don't want to get burned out, you have to be here on your own doing your own personal work and doing stuff that you love. And that's the work that you show and that's the work that you show that you want to get hired for and those are jobs that are going to get you excited, that are going to get you looking forward to waking up in the morning. Uh, not the paid work that you're doing, headshots or, or whatever it is, or grind work or catalog work. So that's something that if you're a student that you need to keep in mind. And in addition, 
that you do that's uh, extra work that if you're a working professional, you have to do your paid work, you have to do your personal work and put a ton of work into that. But it's also what's important that they didn't teach me in school is you have to work equally, if not harder, on marketing yourself. If you do amazing work and nobody knows who you are, you're just as useless as someone who doesn't do anything. So the amount of hard work that you do producing your shoots, doing the retouching, setting it up, producing all that, you have to work equally hard marketing that work to potential, potential clients that you, that you want and uh, that you have. Because uh, if you don't do that, you might as well not be doing any work because like I said, you're just as useless as someone who's not doing anything. So uh, that's been my experience in going to school and you know actually being a working photographer on you know the pros and cons to each. Uh, could you absolutely uh, could you be a photographer without going to art school and studying it and studying art uh, and studying photography? Absolutely. You know a lot of it is more on the grind and the hustle that you do and go out there and marketing yourself. That's the most important thing, and a lot of art students unfortunately don't have that. Um, does uh, going to art school or photography benefit you? In my opinion, it does on the creative side. But like again, the creative side doesn't necessarily equate to you getting hired and getting more work. Um, getting you more work and getting hired is how well you market yourself. And with that being said, you need to have good work and have a good product, so they go hand in hand. But like, like I said, there's plenty of photographers out there, if you know, that, um, that do mediocre work and they get constantly hired because they're great at marketing. And then another thing that you know school doesn't teach you or doesn't teach you anywhere it's on top of doing good work and on top of marketing, the biggest asset on you getting hired is how you are as a person. You know, if you're a jerk, if you're rude, um, if you don't reply to emails, or if you're, you know, if you're just not a pleasant person to be around with, uh, or if you can't take critique, nobody's going to want to work with you. And that's something that they don't teach you in school either. Um, it's something great that will help you out, uh, in my opinion, to be a better photographer, just be a better person. So take, you know, um, public speaking classes. Take um, classes to help you, you know, uh, on conversing better. Uh, kind of just educate yourself overall and stuff like that so you can hold a conversation and just be a good kind of hearted person. I know it sounds simple, uh, but seriously the biggest advice I could give you is just don't be a jerk. Um, you know, that, that goes for anybody, for any profession. Like, I, for me, personally, when I look to hire an assistant or anybody that wants to intern with me, the number one thing I look at them, I don't care what your, how your work looks like, I don't care how much lighting you know, the most important thing for me is your attitude and your personality. I want somebody that's you know has a great attitude, that's great to be around, and that's willing to learn and work hard. I don't really care how much lighting you know, or how much knowledge you work, or how many A's you got. I don't care if you're an F student. If you want to work hard and if you have a great attitude, that's what I look for. That's the main thing I look for in a person. Uh, you know, in somebody that's a problem solver and that doesn't ask a million questions, right? So if I tell you to do something and it, you know something that you could figure out on your own that's mainly what I'm looking for and I, like I said I don't care how much knowledge you have of photography or anything like that it's just uh, what kind of um, vibe do you got what energy do you give out um, and that's important on set because one toxic person on set could completely kill the entire mood could completely kill the flow and it could kill the job you know what I mean it could cost you the job or somebody else your job so that's the most important thing that, uh, that you need in my opinion to succeed that they don't teach in school